Hey all, it's Will, and for those of you who don't know me already, I do all of the editing and post-production for all things A Paranormal Chicks. So that means that I listen to all of Donna and Carrie's mistakes and bad jokes and tangents, all the stuff that doesn't make it into the final episodes. And what we do at the end of every month, I package all of those things that have been cut out and we put them out as bloopers on the Patreon feed. So if you want to hear all of that extra behind the scenes stuff that doesn't make it into the final episode, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the APC podcast. Also on Patreon, tons and tons of extra content from the 31 nights of Halloween and all of the months gone by previously. If you're a fan of a British accent, I will be reading some creepy stories over there very shortly. So there really is no better time to sign up. So again, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the APC podcast and check out the tiers. But in the meantime, enjoy these sinister sightings. Carrie. And we are a Paranormal Chicks. Sinister Sightings 34. We are still moving and freaking grooving in 31 Nights of Halloween and having a blast. Yep. The lives have been great. If you have called them, they've been good. Mm-hmm. Not for us, but for y'all. Because quality entertainment. Because... Uh, quality? Uh, sub, entertainment. Subpar quality. I mean, funny. <laughs> But we're idiots. Yes. We like to make ourselves look like complete morons on the lives. Mm -hmm. And we succeed. We put our mind to something and we fucking do it. (laughs) Besides get there on time. I mean, (laughs) you can't win at everything, Donna. Right, right. There has to be something wrong. If we won at every single thing we did, I mean, that wouldn't be fair to anybody else. Mm -mm. If we were so good at being idiots and so clumsy... (laughs) And all those things, Mm -hmm. I mean, there has to be something left for other people. They get to be on time. Yep. I will say, I am not late to a movie. Yes, we are sometimes. Not? Not late. We miss some of the previews. Yeah. And because now, let's be honest, our movie theaters, you pick your seat, so it really doesn't fucking matter. Yeah. Because I hate when people are like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Well, again, now we have, like, recliners and Mm -hmm. stuff, so Uh, they're wide and, yes, like, okay, I can have mine, like, all the way reclined, and people can still shimmy and shake through Mm -hmm. it. I know. Our only two movie theaters both have recliners. Mm Mm-hmm. It's heaven. It really is. One of them, a little more extra large pizza friendly Uh with the width of their recliners, and that's the one we go to. Yes. All right. You ready to jump right in? Mm Mm-hmm. This one is called A Bright Lighted Figure and a Ghost Who Lives in My Bathroom. Those fucking bathroom ghosts. Why do they like it so much? You know why? You love how I ask a question <laughs> and then give you the answer. I mean, I'm used to it. It's because they want to catch you at your most fucking vulnerable. Literally with your pants down. <laughs> well, you would be a bathroom ghost. I, maybe. Uh, yeah, because you'd be like, oh, hold on. Like. I mean, it is where I spend most of my time. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Okay. They say, hey, ladies. First of all, I love your podcast and enjoy every episode. I'm new and still binging. <laughs> I love, okay, this person, you're my soulmate. Because they said, I'm new and still binging, and then spelled binging with the E. And then they said, words are hard. <laughs> that is it. great. Because it's true. Is it binging with no E or binging with an E? I don't know. I don't either. But so true. Okay. They say, so we're diving straight in. I'm a clairsentient and empath. I've always had these sort of feelings with energies and paranormal beings, but I've only recently been trying to figure myself out and learn more about it when it comes to spirits and things. I grew up very religious, so my whole life I was told that ghosts weren't real and demons walked the earth and fooled people into thinking they were ghosts. Did you have my childhood? Is that what you believed? I mean, I just, not, uh, sort of, like... (laughs) That ghosts no, but yes. But yeah, question mark. The ghosts weren't real, and demons try to trick you. So the only part missing is that they're ghosts. ghosts. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so really, 
their whole tomfoolery could actually, in fact, make you want to think they're a ghost. It could just be one of their sticks. Yeah. Okay. They saw Casper, and they were like, this is how we get him. De- they all love fucking Devin Sawa. Mm-hmm. Let's be him. Mm-hmm. My opinions have obviously changed as I'm now 26 and can think for my own damn self, but that would explain why I never wanted to learn more about my abilities. That sounds so fucking weird to say, LOL. Anyways, <laughs> this person is us. Yes. I don't have any make Donna fear fart spooky stories. <laughs> 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 but I do have some weird happenings. I'll only tell two for now. Picture it. I'm about five or six with my mom and dad visiting our family in Florida. The family we visited consisted of my great aunt and her husband, my second cousin and her husband, my aunt, my grandma, and grandpa. So you can imagine the hotel rooms were packed. We ended up booking two rooms right next to each other so we could open the connecting door and visit with each other every day. Anyway, since there were so many of us, my mama and I slept on the floor on some blankets. We fell asleep fine, and I was having fun sleeping on the floor since it felt like an adventure. I'm sure my mom didn't feel the same way, but bless her for staying with me all night, lol. That, you know what? Hold on. Even as a kid, sleeping on the floor hurt my fucking back. Hell yeah, we had to have a mattress down. Why? Why? Is that fun? <laughs> it's not. It hurts my fucking back. Like, I'm talking even as like a, ch- like a child, like a like a... A child. A ch- <laughs> child, as I just said. <laughs> okay. To cast a picture of what I could see while laying on the floor, let me explain the layout of the room we slept in. My mama and I were on the floor right next to the bed. To the right of the bed was the window, AC, and connecting door, which I could not see from where I was. To the front was a wall. I'm sorry. From the windows to the walls. To the sweat drop down my balls. <laughs> To the front was a wall, and to the left was me and Mama. Then, to our left was a wall and a hallway. If you could walk down the hallway, there would be a bathroom to the left, and the exit door would be straight ahead. So I fell asleep just fine as far as I know. All I remember was waking up, opening my eyes in the middle of the night, and seeing a very tall figure. He nearly reached the ceiling, Uh -uh. who shone a bright yellow light standing in the entry of the hallway. Mm -mm. Now, when I say bright, I mean bright, but the light didn't shine around him. He was just filled with this bright yellow light and just stood there. He had no features, but I knew he was looking at me. Then he turned around and walked toward the bathroom. I don't remember what happened after that, if I fell back asleep or what, but I told my parents about it in the morning and as they were very religious, just said I saw Jesus and nothing more was really said of it. I still have no idea what this entity was, but I wasn't scared of him. I actually felt calm. I can't find anything about bright shining figures online anywhere, so if anyone has an idea of what it could have been, I'd love to hear suggestions. I now have been thinking it was an archangel making an appearance, but I ultimately have no clue. On to my second story. So ever since I moved out of my parents' house when I was 22, I had this ghost living in my bathroom. I'm not sure if he lived in my old apartment and followed me around or if he found me somewhere and followed me home, but he's still living in my bathroom. His dedicated ass moved all the way from Ohio to Colorado with me. I've read that ghosts who live in bathrooms are dangerous, but he honestly reminds me of a grumpy old man. Now, I'd be grumpy as a ghost too, I bet. Oh, for sure. You I'd be would like, be yeah. so grumpy. I'd be a grumpy old man in the bathroom if mm-hmm. I was a ghost. Mm-hmm. I identify with this ghost. That's how I picture him. He likes to hang out around my shower, in the corner, and he hates loud noises. Okay, that really is Carrie. Whenever I blow dry my hair, I can feel him getting more and more grumpy. Again, I'm Claire sentient. So, I can't always see the ghosts, occasionally out of the corner of my eye, another story about that another time, but I can feel them. So, occasionally, I get the running up the basement stairs feeling in the bathroom, and I'll leave for a second, let him chill, then come back in, because your girl has frizzy hair, and if you don't fix my shit, I'll look crazy. (laughs) Same. Other than him trying to scare me away and feeling like he's watching me, he leaves me alone, so I didn't think much about him hanging out. I've thought about saging my apartment, but I know if you sage a house, 
that demons are attached to, it can make the situation worse. And I don't want to take the chance. So I haven't tried. That's all I have for now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Devin so well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry it was a little longer than I thought it would be. I'll probably send another email with more another time, but bye for now and thanks for reading, Kay. Oh my God, Kay, that was great. Yes. Also, we know who you're going to be as a ghost. Mm-hmm, and and the ghost and Kay, my soulmate. Mm-hmm. This person wants to remain anonymous. So, which character? Let's see. I'm... Oh, let's do a, like a scary one. Like Elvira. Sorry, Tiffany. Okay. I was going to say Emily Rose. Foreshadowing of the foreskin. <gasps> no! Really? Hi, ladies. Let me just say that I love your show. You leave me laughing out loud and saying things out loud at work that leaves others looking at me like, what the fuck? Because I have my headphones on. <laughs> just keep on walking, people. Nothing to see here. I recently have been listening to the Sinister Sightings shows. Woo! That was a tongue twist here. They kept me great company on my six-hour drive home from visiting family. While listening, it brought back the memory of something I had experienced as a kid. I had come home from school and unlocked the back door. I walked inside and proceeded to let the dog out as was my normal routine. As I was opening the back door to let the dog out, I glanced through the bathroom that led right into my parents' room. All these bathrooms. Right? It was one of those glances where you look and then you turn your head right back away because you're like, what the fuck was that? When I glanced, I had seen a tall shadow standing there. It all happened so fast, but I also noticed that it looked like he had something like a knife in his hand. Uh Uh-uh. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. (laughs) Nope. What the Michael Myers is going on here? I don't fucking know. When I glanced right back at it, the shadow disappeared. I ran outside and waited for someone to come home before going back into the house. I never did see him again. I also listened to a couple of sightings that people wrote in saying the name of Jesus out loud when faced with their not so pleasant experience and how there is power in that name. These sightings immediately reminded me of the things my mom had experienced. My mom had been diagnosed with muscular dystrophy, and throughout the years, her body slowly failed her. She got to the point where she had to stay with my sister because she literally couldn't walk or get out of bed without assistance. Bless it. My mom was staying in my sister's spare room, and one night while she lay in bed with the bedroom door open, the hallway got really dark. She saw three figures walking up and down the hall like they were searching for something. My mom was a great woman of faith. She said, in Jesus' name, leave. Right then, the figures disappeared and the hallway got lighter again. Another time, when she was in bed, her bedroom got dark and she felt something pushing on her chest. Again, she said, in Jesus' name, leave. The pressure started to release. She kept saying it until she no longer had the pressure on her chest and the room lightened up again. I got chills when my mother spoke about it. Mom eventually got to the point where she needed to stay in the nursing home. She would sometimes cruise the halls later at night in her electric wheelchair when many people weren't around. They see her rolling. They hate. Did she say that? Yes, she did. Yes. (laughs) She told me how sometimes she would see a dark figure dart quickly around the hallway. One day, she was talking to a nurse that worked there that she could openly speak with. She said, yeah, I've seen them. She said it usually meant that someone would be passing soon. The nurse asked my mom if she had seen the lady in white as well. My mom had not, but the nurse said that she could sometimes be seen standing outside some of the patient's room. Again, chills. Oh my God. There was also one day that my mom was sitting out in the day room. There were two other nurses with her. They were just hanging out, talking, and all of a sudden, sparks appeared and darted across the room. I remember her telling me it was around 2 p.m. They all looked at each other and was like, did you see that? They all quickly left the day room. The next day, my mom found out that one of the nurses that had been working there had committed suicide in her home around the time that the spark incident happened. Oh, my God. I'm getting chills just typing about these, and now I might have to shave my damn legs again. (laughs) (laughs) 
Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Sadly, my mom passed away in 2014. She was a great loss to the world, as so many people that came into contact with her felt better just being around her. I had a really hard time. I relived her passing every night when I would shut my eyes for almost a year. My daughter had recently gotten pregnant, and one day I was at home and completely zoned out or had a vision while wide awake, whatever you want to call it. In my vision, I saw my mom talking to a child. They were in heaven looking down at the world below. My mom said to the child, it is time to go, honey. The child said, but grandma, I don't want to go. I want to stay up here with you. Mom said to the child, I know you do, but you are needed more on earth. I was crying uncontrollably when I quote unquote woke up from that vision. That night, for the first time since she passed, I didn't relive her death. That last part was hard to write as I cry every time I think about it or tell someone about it. Thanks for reading my stories. Stay awesome. Oh my gosh. Bless it. I'm so sorry for your loss. Also, your mom sounds amazing. Yes. And as someone who's worked in nursing homes, it is so, like, refreshing and amazing to be able to make, like, those connections with the residents who live there. And so I know that she touched so many of the lives of the people who not only live there, but work there, too. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing her stories, your stories. Just thank you. And I hope you didn't have to shave your legs again, because that sucks. I don't even want to do it the first time. Right. All right, this one. Hello, ladies. I'm so happy to have been in search of such a podcast and finding you girls. You guys can make a story scary and still manage to bring us back to laughter after a good scare. LOL. I'm not on Facebook as much, so I haven't checked out your group, but we'll be doing so soon. I was having a hard time trying to figure out which encounter I should send you guys, but finally decided to send you a couple of stories in different emails just because there are so many. I will be starting off with my first scary experience. Okay, so picture this. 116-year-old house with no history record, and the only information you get is that the house had previously had a fire, and there was at least one known death in the house. My dad bought this house when I was seven, and I still remember how much work the house needed. Since the fire, the house had not been fixed, and people were still living there. Side note, the house was originally a single-family home with four bedrooms, two baths, one kitchen, but when he renovated, he wanted to rent the house in sections, so now there's a total of seven beds, seven baths, and five kitchens. So my parents kept the bottom half of the house for us and rented the rest of the rooms. Okay, I still remember our first night at the house. There was no power, so we had to walk around with flashlights. My mom, as usual, made sure my sister and I showered before bed, and the only running water was from the kitchen sink, so she took turns to shower us. It was not that we didn't shower on our own. We were already six and seven, but she was afraid we would hurt ourselves, so don't judge. (laughs) She says, ha Girl, I ain't judging. Mm-mm. Hell, I wish I had someone to bathe me right now. Mm-hmm. As she was helping my sister dress, we heard the door open and my mom, not looking back, said hi to my dad, but there was no reply. My mom shrugged it off, thinking he went straight to the kitchen to put the food down he had bought. When she was done, she walked into the kitchen, only to find that my dad wasn't home yet. My mom had seen and gone through so much with the paranormal, so not being her first rodeo, she said... This is your house, and we mean no harm, but you are gone now, and we wish to live here in peace. So many times we would be in the kitchen having dinner, my dad would still be at work, and we would always hear the door opening. My sister and I would just look at each other, waiting for my dad to walk in, but we would only hear my mom say, you are welcome to sit down and eat. At first, it was just the door, but after a few weeks, my sister and I noticed that we would always feel uncomfortable in our room. We would spend most of the day in our parents' room and even use their bathroom because ours made us feel like we were being watched. What the hell with all these bathrooms? And you know what? Now I gotta go to the bathroom. Of course you do. To this day, everyone would rather use my parents' bathroom. Per usual, I was having a really hard time falling asleep, and I kept tossing and turning. When I finally felt like I was drifting off to sleep, it must have been nearly 3 a.m. when I felt like I was being watched. 
I was starting to feel scared when I slowly started to look towards the foot of our bed. When I finally looked over, I saw a young white lady dressed in a yellow dress that reminded me of Belle from Beauty and the Beast. She was beautiful and had great curly hair. I remember admiring her, but it wasn't long till I felt two pairs of hands pinning me down. Uh Uh-uh. No. One was holding my legs and the other was holding me down at my arms. Uh -uh. Mm Uh-uh. Mm-mm. I know. I felt paralyzed and could not move. I tried to scream to try to wake up my sister, who was only a few inches from me, but all that I could do was mumble a soft scream. Many will argue that this was sleep paralysis. But I know I hadn't fallen asleep yet when this happened. I also hadn't heard the story of the lady that died in the house yet. Story has it, this couple was going to get married, but last minute, the guy got cold feet and never arrived. Later that night, they found out that she had committed suicide. A few guys lived on the second floor of the front part of the house, and they mentioned that there had been a few times when they would get home really late after a night of drinking, and they would see a lady at the top of the stairs dressed in a white gown. It could have been their drunken state of mind that caused them to see this, but I thought it was a coincidence that they saw a lady, and I had also seen one just not dressed the same. My parents continued to live in the house with my little brother and sister, and they kept our room. They also don't like being in the room for too long. I mentioned that the house has seven rooms, and out of the seven rooms, I have stayed in five, and I have a different experience in all of them but I'll leave those for another time. Sorry if this wasn't so detailed or well written, but I'm at work and trying to write this out before I get flooded with work. LOL. Have a great and amazing 4th of July. Jessica Reyes. Oh my goodness. And BTW, she did join the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Also, how your mom know how to say all that stuff? Right? Well, because she said it wasn't her first rodeo. True, true, true. But still, I'd be like, help. Well, we've learned stuff through other people's stuff. That's true. I mean, still, I'd be like, help! (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Okay, this one is called Stop Croaking in My Ear. Hey, y'all. Sorry ahead of time if I lack punctuation because I'm typing this up so fast. Well, this spooky story is actually from my childhood. I've always considered myself an empath and had premonitions of death within my family, but we'll save that for another time because your girl has some stories. Picture it. It's June of 1997 in our quiet suburban home in San Jose, California. Dude. That's when you were there? That's when I was there. It's crazy. In San Jose. That's pretty cool. Yes. Also weird that I was right on a date. Also weird that tonight when we were at dinner, Donna gave me a face like she had just seen a ghost. And I was like, what? And she said that... This lady that just walked by the window at dinner, she was like, she thought it was her sister that's passed. She was like, I thought that was Lori. Like, she looked just like her. So weird that in this story, you just put it together that that's actually when you were there. And when you were there, you were going to see that sister. Yeah. Wow. Y'all, I was talking to Carrie like, blah, 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 blah. Legit, I almost said, you look like you just saw a ghost. (laughs) And then she was like, that lady looked just like Lori. Because she had, like, purple hair, like, kind of purple and blue. Mm-hmm. And so Donna said her it looked how like how her hair was cut from a distance. It looked like she had on one of those caps that Lori would wear when she lost her hair because she had cancer. Yeah. that, And I had seen her, like, I'm telling y'all, it was just, I don't know. Yeah, because I, I had seen her, too, like, while we were eating. Yeah, and didn't look like my sister at all, but it was like she walked through. Oh, and... Right as you were kind of making the face, I saw some, because I was facing Obvi the opposite way, and I saw like some headlights pass, and I was like, light, Donna's making a face, did we both just see a ghost? But it was headlights. I forgot about that till you just said that. Okay, sorry. So we're going back to their home in San Jose, California. Okay. Do you know the way to San Jose? I was about four when we moved into our now home for over 20 years. When my dad bought our home, he was so proud of himself. My parents were immigrants, so having a home was the start of my dad's American dream. Oh, God. So nothing was going to get in the way of us living in this home. But I remember when I was picking out my room, I always felt off about the third bedroom. Never liked it. Never wanted to be in it. 
The home was bought from an elderly couple who had two kids and one of them had passed away. We never knew from what, but that will make sense later on. I ended up bunking with my parents. Sorry for them because I was a major cock block, (laughs) but I never wanted to sleep by myself. My dad ended up renting the room to my uncle who had recently immigrated from Mexico also. Well, needless to say, shortly after, weird-ass shit started happening. About a month in, my uncle started waking up with night terrors and really wouldn't speak of them, but I would know something was up because he was sweaty as hell. Fast forward, one night, we were woken up by my uncle screaming at the top of his lungs and a huge thump, so of course my dad sprang into action thinking that someone had broken into the house. I have a bat, my dad yelled. And my uncle was yelling for my dad to come help him. So, of course, my nosy ass gets up to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. I would, too. My uncle was on the floor crying. Yes, a grown man crying on the floor, saying someone had pulled him out of the bed. Oh, shit. My dad said, you're full of shit. Go back to bed. My uncle said he was serious and that he had scratches on his legs. He showed them to my dad He did not believe a word he said, but I remember it was three scratches on each of his ankles and he was super shaken up. So I stayed there with him to keep him company, but I remember feeling some type of way about the closet. Something about that closet wasn't right, but your girl was six at this point and I didn't really know what my gifts were at this point. Well, shit got worse as soon as our water pump broke and guess what? The only way underneath our house was through my uncle's room closet. What? That's weird. It was like a removable tile piece. My uncle basically started getting attacked by this evil entity. He would wake up with scratches on his face in three, which we all know is no good. Mm -hmm. Also on his back and even woke up with foot imprints on his chest. My dad is a very practical man, so he does not believe in that shit. My uncle started kind of going crazy talking to himself in his room saying, leave me alone. My mom started to get really concerned and told my dad, maybe we should bless the home. But my dad, of course, said no, because that was some bullshit. My uncle ended up switching rooms and things kind of calmed down for him, but not for me. I started feeling cold drafts in the house and stuff started happening to me once I moved into the room next to his. I used to have dreams of blood dripping down the heater vents, and that heater vent connected to my uncle's old room. I would also have this reoccurring dream of finding my mom and sister in the bathtub with their throats slit. I would also hear footsteps in my room loud enough to wake me up. Things got bad, but I always knew to say in my head, you can't have me, and things would chill out. I was around 13 at this point. Things got real spicy as soon as my mom put up holy crosses above me and my sister's headboard. Mine would always end up falling behind my bed and I would usually go and grab it. Well, one time it came to me in a physical form. I actually felt it behind me breathing and I felt this deep sense of fear like someone had choked me and it finally let out a sound. It was almost like a croak. I was paralyzed in fear. I couldn't move. I couldn't breathe. I felt the tears streaming down my face as soon as I was let go of this grip. I went and cried to my mom, and she believed me and finally gave a big F you to my dad and went herself to hire the priest. All of the rooms were blessed, and things really calmed down after that. I haven't experienced anything since then in my house. Now that I'm a little older, I wonder if something is underneath that tile or if someone harmed themselves in there. And that's why the previous owners ended up moving so fast. But that's the end of my long story. I have a couple more to send on. Creep it real and don't get scared. Steph. Wow. Could you imagine like truly believing and knowing that there was a demon in your house? No. I can't even. No. Mm -mm. That makes me so anxious. I can't do it. The croak? Uh -uh. Mm Uh-uh. Well, one, I'm scared of frogs. Mm -hmm. So, no. That was so good. Like, edge of my seat. Hey, ladies. I'm Jamie, and I just started listening to the podcast after hearing you guys from The Haunted Heart. Oh, thanks. Shout out Kenny and Katie, Haunted Heart Podcast. They are our besties. 
Trigger warning, there will be cursing, and this story contains violence against a child. Mm. I have a pretty creepy story, although it has nothing to do with the paranormal, from my senior year of college. I went to college in a really rural area in North Georgia. That was really hard. Girl, I am so glad you got that. Mm -hmm. Will would have been here for an hour trying to get me to get that right. (laughs) It would have been like, really rural. You still did it better than I did. (laughs) Let me tell you guys, it was boring AF there. Nothing of note ever happens. Well, one day, my roommate told me her brother was coming to visit and bringing some stuff from home. And then I would be like, is he single? That literally would be my question to her. Dibs. Just bitch. (laughs) He shows up while we were both hanging out in our room, and he brings this guy with him. I didn't think much of the guy because he was very quiet. We exchanged some small talk, and they left. I asked my roommate who the guy with her brother was, and she said, Oh, he's my brother's best friend. He lives nearby. I didn't think much about this interaction again until eight months later. My roommate and I decided to go to a local sports bar to grab some lunch. We sat near the bar, and the TVs were on playing a local news station. Apparently, a huge story had broken our town, and being short-sighted college students, neither of us knew anything about it. My roommate sat facing the TV, and I had my back to it. She looked up, and she says, Hey, my brother's BFF is on TV. I wonder why. I turn around just in time to see the headline roll that the BFF, piece of shit, kidnapped, tortured, and murdered a little girl. What the fuck? That motherfucker. Apparently, this fucker worked as a handyman at a local apartment complex, and he was obsessed with this little girl. I think she was about four or five. No. Her mother worked the night shift, and while her mother was asleep, the little girl got out of the apartment. The oh, my gosh. Sh- I know. The shitbag found her and took her to an empty apartment where he proceeded to murder this baby. Oh, my gosh. The news said the murder room looked straight up like the murder room from Dexter. Uh Uh-uh. He had planned it. Needless to say, this absolutely idiotic hellspawn was caught a day or two after the body was found in a community dumpster at the complex. No. Oh, my gosh. I remember turning around and looking at my roommate. She and I had no words and finished our lunch in silence. He is now in prison and will never see daylight again, but I still think about how close this fucker was to me. I don't know why he did this, and I doubt anyone will ever know, but I'm glad he was caught so quickly. I'm sorry about the depressing story, but I had to share this and get it off my chest. It still eats at me nine years later. Creep it real, and thanks for having such a welcoming community of creepsters. Jamie. Wow. Well, you know what? I'm so glad he was stupid as fuck Mm -hmm. and dumped the body right there. Right there. Because I'm so glad he was caught. But fuck him. That's so scary, too, to think like it literally could be anybody. It could have been her. I think he clearly had a very specific type. You know, like he was obsessed with this kid. Like he wouldn't, I don't think he, well, I mean, never say never, but I think it was more about the kid than just killing, you know? Well, and that's the thing, too. Like, he had that set up, so he knew it was empty, set it up, and was like, one day, you know, when, because he knew when it would be filled or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my thing, too, though. You don't just go from dude to murderer like that. Like, there was some form of escalation. So, Uh what are we missing in his escalation of victims? You know what I mean? There has to be victims that we don't know about. Way to make it more depressing, Carrie. I know. I'm sorry. And totally cool that it wasn't a paranormal. We want true crime stuff, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Hi there, Donna and Carrie. I'm one of your younger creeps, mid-teens, but I still really love the podcast, and it keeps me entertained while drawing or on long car trips. I cannot believe that somebody young likes us. I know. (laughs) We're cool. We're dope. (laughs) We we win it. We getting jiggy with it. Okay. Okay. And she ruined it. (laughs) And now nobody listens anymore. Fuck. Anyways, down to the stories. I have two, and I apologize if they're long and stuff. You could cut them up if you want. No way. Story number one is when me and my grandparents took a trip down to Philadelphia from New York. It was the last day, and we were going to visit Eastern State Penitentiary in the later part of the day. I was excited because this place was allegedly haunted. As we went around the place, I got more and more frustrated since I wasn't seeing anything. Then we got to cell block seven. 
As a bit of background, a lot of the cells are closed off to visitors due to them falling apart. In one of these closed off cells, through a hole in the door, I saw a silhouette of a man just sitting there. I stepped closer, but he seemed to vanish. Weird, I thought, but that wasn't all I saw at the prison. Before we left, I wanted to check out the death row cell block. But as I got there, it was chained off, allowing access to only school groups. I was pissed since I was excited to see the cells. So I just asked my grandparents if they could sit down while I checked it out since they didn't see the sign. They obliged and I went in. When I saw the death row cells, I was in shock. I saw a man with a burlap sack over his head (gasps) just standing there. (gasps) He was breathing heavily as if he was sobbing just a minute ago. I just stared for what felt like hours until I heard an, excuse me, miss. I turned around and it was one of the workers. He told me politely to leave since I wasn't in a group and I happily obliged. That incident scared me, but not as much as the following one. Oh, shit. Story number two happened a few months after that Philly trip when my family managed to get a new house to live in. I was playing with my sister, who I'll call Sophie, and I asked her how her friends at school were. She told me that they were all fun, but that she had a new one named Mia. She had blonde hair, light skin, and a very pretty dress. But then the bombshell came. I was playing with her right before you started to play with me. She's behind you. (gasps) I turned around, and nobody was there. I looked at Sophie, obviously nervous, Maybe it's an imaginary friend, right? I thought. Then Sophie got up to go to the big closet and she opens the door. I'm right behind her, but I'm suddenly blasted with cold air from the closet. As a note, there are no windows or vents to that closet. And this was in October. Every room and closet were room temperature at worst. So hell no, I was not letting Sophie go in there. Mm -mm. I pulled her back and shut the door. Later that night, I went in there. I told Mia to please leave us alone and not hurt us. All I heard in response was what sounded like quiet giggles. (gasps) A couple days later, I was looking in the small handheld mirror for some reason, maybe because I thought I had something on my face. Whatever the reason, I lifted it in a certain way and screamed when I looked behind me. There was Mia, like Sophie said. She had long, greasy, blonde hair and pale-ass skin. She wore a lacy gray dress that looked like it had been drawn through gallons of mud and dirt. Her hands and neck were twitching. She looked like she was stepping closer, so I bolted to where we keep the sage. I threw it in a pan and lit that crap right up. I went all around the house, begging God in all his names and titles to bless this house and protect us. When Sophie came home from school, I asked him to bless her too. For overkill's sake, I went outside with a box of salt and drew a circle around the house. It's been around nine or so months, and I still burn sage and do the salt ring monthly. Sophie is five now, and she doesn't remember a friend named Mia. All I can say, though, is that that big closet warmed up quite a bit. Thanks for listening to my super long stories. I hope they were not boring. Creep it real and keep doing an amazing job on the podcast. Paranoid in New York. Wow. That was really good. Yes. Like, that was Carrie's, like, authentic reaction. Yeah. (laughs) She sucked all the oxygen out of the room. That was fucking scary. Mm -hmm. Also, that y'all have a handheld mirror. Like, I was just picturing, like, an old-timey one, though. Like, Beauty and the Beast. You know what I took away from that, too? I forgot to say in the three seconds we've been (laughs) talking about this. Was that very interesting, though, that your little sister saw this beautiful young girl with gorgeous hair and a gorgeous dress. And then when you saw her, dirty hair, dirty dress, like bone thin. Mm -hmm. So you must have seen her reflection of who she really was. Yeah. Damn. Okay. Chills. Like, whew, Carrie is bringing the realness. Literally chills. Wow. Y'all, these stories were so freaking good and it's you know what's so weird is that we literally pull these stories as they come in to us mm-hmm. like we don't jump around well i mean unless it's unintentional you know we mm-hmm. don't jump around like we read them in the order that we get them and it's so weird how many episodes there's been a theme yes that we didn't do right 
Yeah, last time it was haunted houses. Mm-hmm. This time, bathrooms. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. So good. Hopefully that gave y'all chills for the 31 nights of Halloween. Thank you so much, as always, for listening. Keep sending in the stories to aparanormalchicks at gmail.com. And if you have any Halloween stories, short, long, funny, scary, spooky, all the Halloween, send them in. We want to do a more Halloween-themed episode for the next Sinister Sightings. Again, same thing, aparanormalchicks at gmail.com, and just put Halloween in the title. Yes. And remember, creep it real and and don't don't get scared. scared.